Percival Lee Wilson was born into a middle-class Protestant household in Kensington in London in 1887. The son of a stockbroker, he was the grandson of the Lord Mayor of London, Samuel Wilson. Although educated at Oxford, Percival chose a career in the Royal Irish Constabulary. He was first stationed in Woodford in County Galway and later in Charleville, County Cork in 1909. And in 1914, he married a local Catholic girl, Mary Ryan, the daughter of a well-known solicitor. At the outbreak of the First World War, he enlisted in the 18th Royal Irish Regiment and served on the Western Front, where he was seriously wounded. He had reached the rank of captain, but his injury forced him to return to Ireland. According to RIC records, Lee Wilson rejoined the police force and was in Dublin during the 1916 Easter Rising. After six days of fighting, the Irish Volunteer Garrison at the GPO surrendered to Brigadier General Lowe, commander of British forces in Dublin. My own great-grandfather, Luke Kennedy, was among those in the GPO who surrendered. He was a member of the Irish Republican Brotherhood from 1898 to 1922 and succeeded Major Sean McBride as leader of up to 100 members who met under the guise of the Literary and Debating Society at his house on Great Charles Street. On the fifth night of fighting, as Sackville Street and the upper floors of the GPO were engulfed in flames, the volunteers made their way out onto Henry Street and into Moor Lane, evading British machine guns positioned at the end of the laneway and the top of Moor Street. Luke, along with Tom Clark and other volunteers, succeeded in breaking into a corner house on Moor Street and continued breaking through houses along the terrace until they reached a chemist shop where they secured dressings for the wounded men. Number 16 Moor Street became their temporary headquarters for the night and it was there that the decision to surrender was made by Patrick Pierce, James Connolly and Tom Clark. The following afternoon, Pierce surrendered unconditionally to Brigadier General Lowe at Clark's little tobacconist shop on Great Britain Street, now called Parnell Street. Later that evening, the volunteers marched up Moore Street and into Henry Street, carrying their arms and equipment, turned it to Sackville Street and then across to the far side of the thoroughfare, where they were ordered to line up in single file. The British then instructed them to take three steps forward and lay down their arms. They were then marched to the Rotunda Gardens at the rear of the Rotunda Hospital, where they were kept for the remainder of the night. Today, this is the Garden of Remembrance, which was opened by President Eamon de Valera in 1966 and is dedicated to the memory of all those who gave their lives in the cause of Irish freedom. About 250 volunteers were crammed into the garden where Captain Lee Wilson and his men walked amongst them. Lee Wilson ordered that all the prisoners lie on the ground without moving for 12 hours, forcing them to relieve themselves where they lay. It is claimed that he picked out Tom Clark, the first signatory on the proclamation of the Republic, and marched him to the steps of the hospital. He ordered soldiers to strip him naked as hospital staff looked on from the windows above. Clark was beaten and left on the steps overnight in his tattered clothes. This public humiliation and mistreatment was witnessed by Clark's comrades, including Liam Tobin and Michael Collins, who vowed vengeance, saying Lee Wilson was a marked man. The following day, the rebels were marched to Richmond Barracks in Inchicore, where they awaited court-martial. Fifteen of the leaders, including New Ross native Michael O'Hanrahan, were executed at Kilmainham Jail. Roger Casement was hanged in August in Pentonville Jail in London, having failed in an attempt to import arms from Germany. After a number of weeks in detention, many, including Luke Kennedy, were deported to Frangoch internment camp in Wales and Nutsford, Wormwood Scrubs and Wandsworth prisons in England. Among notables held in Frangoch were Arthur Griffith and Michael Collins.
Captain Percival Lee Wilson settled in Gorey in the years after the Rising, where he was appointed RIC District Inspector. He was based in the RIC barracks, which was later destroyed in an arson attack in 1922, but rebuilt. During his time living in Gorey, he was a member of the local Masonic Lodge and attended Christ Church on the main street. He had regular raids carried out in the area in search of arms, making him very unpopular in the town. On one occasion, Lee Wilson set up a cordon of armed RIC men outside Christ Church and blocked a group of Irish volunteers from Camolan who were returning home from a meeting in Gorey. The group included Father Dominic Sweetman, founder of Mount St. Benedict School and a Republican sympathiser. After a heated argument, Lee Wilson eventually let them pass. Having won a landslide victory in the December 1918 general election, Sinn Féin formed Dáil Éireann in January 1919 and declared Irish independence. In the War of Independence over the following two years, the IRA carried out ambushes of RIC barracks and British Army patrols throughout the country. On the morning of 15th of June 1920, Percival Lee Wilson walked to the RIC barracks in Gorey dressed in civilian clothes. He left soon after in the company of Constable Alexander O'Donnell. Lee Wilson stopped to buy a newspaper at the train station and the pair went their own ways. And Lee Wilson read the paper as he strolled towards his home along the Ballycanoe Road shortly before 10am. He paid little heed to a group of men ahead who were standing around a car that had its bonnet raised. Michael Collins had dispatched IRA volunteers Liam Tobin and Frank Thornton from Dublin, both members of the squad, Collins' elite unit that executed spies and informers. Tobin was his intelligence chief. The operation was sanctioned by IRA General Headquarters and involved a total of 10 men, five to scout out the area and five to carry out the shooting. They met with Joe McMahon, Michael McGrath and Michael Sinnott in Enniscorthy and were driven by Jack Whelan in a stolen car to Gorey to carry out the assassination. As Lee Wilson approached, the men opened fire and he was struck down by two bullets. He managed to get back on his feet and attempted to run, but was caught in a hail of bullets. Lee Wilson stumbled for a further 15 yards before collapsing and dying. One of his killers then calmly walked up to the body and fired a final shot to the head to be sure he was really dead. He then casually picked up Lee Wilson's newspaper from the ground and the killers sped off. A coroner's report later confirmed that he was shot a total of seven times. Later that evening, the news of Lee Wilson's killing was relayed to Michael Collins, who was in the Wicklow Hotel, a regular haunt of Collins and his squad, on Dublin's Wicklow Street. He passed the news on to fellow IRA man Joe Sweeney. We got the bugger, Joe, announced Collins. What are you talking about? Sweeney asked. Do you remember that first night outside the rotunda, Lee Wilson? I'll never forget it, Sweeney replied. Well, said Collins, we got him today in Gorey. The head porter of the Wicklow Hotel, Peter Doran, was also shot dead the following January by Collins' men because they believed he was working as a spy for the British, providing information to Colonel Hill Dillon, the Deputy Chief of British Intelligence in Ireland. Percival's widow, Mary, never believed that her husband had maltreated the prisoners in 1916 and she had his body returned to England where he was buried with his father in Putney Vale Cemetery in London. A stained glass window by Harry Clark was later dedicated to him in Christ Church, Gorey. The inscription reads, To the glory of God and in honoured and loving memory of Percival Lee Wilson, District Inspector, RIC, who was killed 15th of June, 1920, erected 
by his wife. Four years later, in 1924, Marley was on a trip to Edinburgh where she purchased a large 17th century religious painting that had been hanging in a private house for over a hundred years. It had been sold at auction in Edinburgh in 1921 for eight pounds and again in 1922 as part of an estate sale and was attributed to the 17th century Dutch artist Gerard van Honthorst and entitled The Betrayal of Christ. The painting depicted Judas betraying Jesus with a kiss and therefore identifying him to the Roman soldiers who were about to take him prisoner. Early in his career, von Honthorst visited Rome and painted in a style influenced by Caravaggio. Mardi had the frame restored by James Hicks of Pembroke Street and hung the painting in her house on Fitzwilliam Place. Marley never remarried and now in her late 30s she enrolled in Trinity College to study medicine. She graduated in 1928 and the following year became a resident staff member at Sir Patrick Dunn's Hospital, which was the teaching hospital for Trinity College. Dr Marley Lee Wilson became a consultant in the Children's Hospital, Harcourt Street, where she worked right up to her death at the age of 84. In 1971. While grieving for her dead husband, Mary had gained solace from a priest, Father Thomas Finlay of the Jesuit community on Leeson Street. In 1934, she donated the painting that she bought in Edinburgh ten years earlier in trust to the Jesuits and it hung in their dining room in Leeson Street for over 60 years. In 1990, the five and a half foot long dark and dusty old painting was sent to Dublin's National Gallery to be cleaned and restored. The task fell to Sergio Benedetti, an Italian art historian who was then the gallery's senior conservator. Benedetti worked on the painting over the next 18 months and said it was the best copy of a Caravaggio that he had ever seen. Finally, a year later, Tests established that it was an original and not a copy. Art researchers in Italy found that the painting had been commissioned in 1602 by Ciriaco Mattei, a wealthy and prolific art collector in Rome. In the late 1700s, Caravaggio's name was no longer attributed to the painting and it was inexplicably mislabeled as a work by Van Hunthorst. When the Mattei family were selling pieces from the family's vast art collection in the early 1800s, it was purchased by a Scottish politician, William Nisbet, in 1802 in Rome and remained in his home, Archerfield House, Dearleton, until 1921. Probably the greatest Italian painter of the 17th century, Caravaggio led a turbulent life. In his book, Lines of Vision, Wexford native John Banville wrote of Caravaggio, what was said of Byron could be as well said of him, that he was mad, bad and dangerous to know. He was dead by the age of 38 from fever, it seems, though he may have been murdered. If it was murder, it is hardly surprising, for he had lived by the sword. Indeed, he killed a man himself in 1606. The lost Caravaggio had been discussed and sought for many years and versions of the taking of Christ were on exhibition around the world. At a public ceremony in 1993, the Baroque masterpiece was handed over to the National Gallery of Ireland on indefinite loan. It was presented to the chairperson of the gallery's board, Dr William Finlay, the grandnephew of Father Thomas Finlay, to whom Mary Lee Wilson gave the painting in 1934. The painting that sold for £8 in 1921 is the most prominent exhibit in the gallery and is valued today at over a staggering €100 million. Euro. To quote the Jesuit priest, Father Noel Barber, had it not been alleged that Percival Lee Wilson humiliated the Republican prisoners in 1916, he would not have been murdered. Had he not been murdered, 
his wife would not have sought counselling from Father Findlay. Had she not become Father Finley's client, she would not have given the taking of Christ to the Leeson Street Jesuits. Had she not done that, we would not have been able to give the magnificent painting to the National Gallery of Ireland. A strange thread of events, indeed. This is just one of the many intriguing stories from Wexford's past that will feature in my third book, Fascinating Wexford History, Volume 2, to be published in October of this year, 2020.